On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team returns to Scotland to investigate a world-renowned opera house. Oh, gosh, I'm seeing shadows. Whoa. <gasps> oh, my gosh. An encore performance gives Barry and Chris the experience of a lifetime. Stop. What? You hear that? Okay. What the hell was that? Then, GHI searches for the trapped spirits of a notorious Scottish prison. We had men, women, and children here. You came to prison at the age of seven. Can the team free the tortured souls of Inverary Jail? Said, come out. Stop hiding. I just felt something. Something just touched you? Yeah. Step forward, you will be freed. Oh, my God, I just heard that. That was a freaking voice. Wow. I hear it. Get out. Very, very careful, of course, driving in these roads, Joe. Um, there's a wicked bad blizzard coming. In. But uh, Susan's going to give us the uh, the download on what we're likely to expect at Usher Hall. Before getting into the claims of Usher Hall, I'd like to talk a little bit about the history of the place. Now, 30 years before Usher Hall was even established, uh, there used to be a boarding school called Lothian Road Boarding School that was located on the same site where Usher Hall is actually located today. Our client Carl is the general manager of Usher Hall, and he called us in to investigate these claims coming from his staff as well as the performers there. A really impressive claim comes from the world-renowned opera singer Dame Kiri Takanawa of New Zealand. It's actually interrupted her performances. She felt as if somebody was walking right behind her, so close it felt like they were almost walking through her. Okay, folks, um, Usher Hall is just directly in front of us. Um, it looks absolutely huge. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. Carl, how are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. I'm very glad GHI are out here in Edinburgh and the Usher Hall because we've had a lot of reports from staff members about paranormal and strange activities uh, happening around the venue. From one level, I'd just like to know what's happening. Yeah, is there any truth behind it? And on a practical operational level, uh, managing the venue, I've got members of staff who won't work a night shift and I've got one security person who won't even come back in the building. So, yeah, it would be nice to know. Well, of course, we've heard some of the, uh, the stories about Usher Hall in regards to paranormal activity. Um, we would love to learn some more about, uh, about those stories and, of course, maybe see where these uh, occurrences are happening. Great. Well, the first place I'm going to take you to are these double doors just here on the stalls level where one of uh, my waitresses thought she saw a gentleman. It was about two or three weeks ago, and through two sets of double doors, I could see a man standing just sideways on, clear as anything, a man in a black suit. And I walked through the first set of double doors and I could still see him, he was still standing. I thought he was just waiting to go into the show. I pushed the door open, I turned to speak to him and he was gone. There was no one there. Well, here we are backstage, corridor stages, you know, right in front of us there, through mm -hmm. the walls. Mm -hmm. One of my staff team brought their dog in once mm -hmm. and so the dog got really spooked coming in here. And mm -hmm. I think it was wandering along this corridor, you know, with just, you know, how well dogs are like, you know, mm -hmm. when they kind of press themselves up against the wall, yeah. and do strange behaviour in the door mm -hmm. to get through to the backstage there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who normally has access to this backstage corridor? Artists, technical crew, and this is one of the points where we've had some other, other stories, and it was from a cleaner. We were cleaning back stairs about two o'clock in the morning. It says he goes girl walking down the corridor. There were four of us working together and seen it. We just jumped up and ran off. I've never done another night shift. Never have. Quite a place. It's amazing, isn't it? It is, it is. It is. Where we're standing now is where the world's greatest performers have stood. Mm -hmm. um, we had a concert here with Kiri Takanoa. I was in the audience at the time, I was sat up in the Grand mm -hmm. Circle. She sort of brushed herself like she'd felt something. 
it's stuck in your mind. Yes. But at the end of the song, she said, I'm sorry, I really sort of felt something like a, you know, it's either footsteps or someone walked behind me. You know, the hairs on the back of your neck go up, and, mm -hmm. and it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely spooky. <laughs> no. What else has happened here? One of the technical crew thought they saw a little girl sat up on her own in the upper circle. Exactly where in, in, these, in the gold seats was this girl seen? I think it was top left. Great. We'll get started, we'll get unpacked and get ready to go. Um, um, we shall see you in a couple of days, hopefully with some results. I look forward to it. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. There are a lot of big questions here going into the investigation, and I really want to concentrate as well on this, this story that was given to us by Carl that was witnessed by a full audience, of course, of Dame Kira on stage singing and feeling this apparition pass by her. We want to really explore that and see what was happening there. Okay, so how's the setup going? Fantastic. What we have here is the stage um, mm -hmm. where this performer actually felt something past her. And what we then have is the stairwell where this little girl was seen, mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, auditorium mm -hmm. where she was actually seen by this technician. Okay. Um, then what we have is the uh, entrance area, mm -hmm. uh, right by the, the bust of uh, Usher. Good, good. So let's get to it, get those lights out, and get investigating. Okay. Okay. This is the stage where Dame Kira was singing and felt the presence pass by. Now, she also said that she felt footsteps. Yeah. Said, Can you imagine standing here singing to a full auditorium for you to stop? What did she have for music behind her? She had a grand piano. And that was it? Yeah. Is that out in the hall, or was it in...? It sounded as if it was in here. Oh, well. I'll get the, uh, the okay. vibration sensors. We'll set them up on stage. Okay. What the hell was that? Chris and I came to investigate uh, the main auditorium of Usher Hall. Now, going into this, Chris and I heard unusual sounds. Is that out in the hall, or was it in here? It sounded as if it was in here. Okay. What the hell was that? I have no idea. It sounded like it was over there, right? I think. Hello? Is there anyone here? Oh, that speaker. Yeah, it's coming from that speaker system. For some reason, it's giving out that noise. Okay, at least we know where it's coming from now. And now. music. Tablet you have ready and everything, yes? Um, yeah. Okay. Two seconds. While we're in here, one of the things we wanted to try was the Singapore theory. All right, ready? Yeah. And the idea was to try to stimulate the area with sounds that might be familiar to it to play music that might be played here at some point or another. You hear that? Stop. What? There's something not right in here. I thought I was hearing footsteps. I was hearing those. It sounded like footsteps as well. Yeah, and it, but it sounded like it was coming from behind you. I thought it was coming from behind you. Is there someone here who would like to hear some more music? Let's roll it again. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Wait. What? I thought I heard something unusual there. What did it sound like? Those footsteps, I can keep, I can still hear those footsteps. They sound as if they're coming from behind you, though. I'm not hearing them behind me. They're very deep and bassy. We have the uh, recorder going. Yeah, we have. The Singapore theory seemed, in principle, to be paying off. Let's go. There's something right. unusual, I have to say, with this particular theater. Um, we do have multiple pieces of equipment running, uh, so I think it's going to fall back onto analysis to see if we were able to isolate those sounds down. Just first, thank 
Scott and I are investigating the uh, backstage corridor uh, where they uh, brought a dog into the building that he would cower to one side of the wall, hugging it and, and crawl along the wall. I don't see anything. Hang on a minute. It's going to be high, too. Oh, bingo. Wow. <laughs> Let's do an EMF sweep. Yeah, sure. See if there's any odd uh, EMFs. We did come across one little area that actually had some uh, unshielded uh, utility boxes. 7.7. .7. They were giving off a high EMF reading, constant. 18.1, 34, 49. Yeah, I think that could do it. Yeah. When they brought the dog in, he hugged the wall where we found the high EMF fields. Either he's reacting to the high EMF fields or he's reacted to something paranormal. Are you the little girl that has been reported here? Do you like dogs? Do you like pets? Is that, is that why you're trying to communicate with the animals that come here? I'm going to put that right there for you. Please come forward. We can play hide and seek. Hide and seek. Ring around the rosy. Please come sit with us and come talk to us. What's that? Right by the door. Wait, here's something. I see a shadow. You see anything? No, nothing. Was that you trying to communicate with us? Are you trying to play with us? Could you do that again, please? If you're here, come on and play some more. It's just spiked, it spiked to two, point two, and not, almost like we're chasing something. It shows up, it disappears, we move, it shows up. Is that what you're doing? You're playing tag? You're running up to us and then running away, see if we could find you? Are you coming to show us how to play? Point three, point four, point five. During our EVP session, the EMF was, was spiking a little. Getting a little bit of a chill. I don't know if I'm sweating and it's cooling off. Oh, yeah, I feel it too. And like back the of back my, neck. my neck. Yeah, exactly. At the same time, we were getting kind of chills, and uh, usually that's an indication that either a spirit may be trying to manifest itself or, or try to communicate in some way. Okay, we're gonna be going. Is that all right? We'll have to check our footage to see during analysis if something was actually recorded. Okay, thank you, sweetie. Okay, we'll see you later. I went to investigate the theater where there have been claims of performers hearing footsteps on the stage while they're performing. Okay, that's where the apparition is actually been seen. Okay. Side door. There are also claims of this young girl apparition. So I decided to go up to that tier and see if I possibly try and make contact with her. All right. Now, we were using a number of tools here in the, in the, in the concert hall, from the uh, full spectrum handycam, night vision handycam, audio recorders, digital photography, the laser burst device. Let's concentrate there. We were actually able to uh, literally cover this place. Hello, can you hear me? My name is Susan. I'm here with a friend of mine. His name is Paul. Maybe you could help me find my dolly. Holy crap, I'm, I'm seeing shadows. I'm seeing shadows up here, I'm not kidding. Totally just saw something right in front of me. Um, like, I'm looking straight forward. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy crap, I'm, I'm seeing shadows. I'm seeing shadows up here, I'm not kidding. I totally just saw something right in front of me. Um, like, I'm looking straight forward. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> what? What was it? I swear to God, there was a shadow that walked right towards me. I saw it in the back rows of this tier that I'm on. I'm seeing more things over there. Directly opposite you, I'm hearing stuff over that side. Are you the little girl? Are you the little girl from the bathroom? I need you to come out from behind me, and I need you to show yourself in front of me. I'm getting chills right now. Just as you said that, so have I. I just actually got a cold chill straight through me. 
temperature dropping and the EMF is going up. Did you just moan? No. It's the third time I've heard it. Oh, gosh, I'm seeing shadows. Whoa. Okay. I'm getting the ch I'm getting goosebumps right now. Oh. <gasps> oh. <gasps> I could have sworn I saw somebody sitting in a chair at the very last tier. I'm going up there. I actually started to feel that, you know what, this, this may not be a little girl that we're dealing with. And it actually felt a lot heavier. No, I, I ain't psychic in any way, um, but I, even I felt that there was not, something wasn't right there. Something's affecting the laser beam. I feel sick. Where are you, man? Do you hear that? That was the door. That was, that was definitely the door. There's someone on the other side of that door. There's no one out here. <gasps> Dude. What? Something just walked right be behind me. I could feel the vibration on the floor. Are you, are you with me now? This is quickly turned from something other than a game. Someone's playing silly buggers and it ain't funny. Who are you then? I do think that there's something going on here, but definitely there's something creepy about this particular location. Let's head back down, okay? Um, and certainly when it comes to analysis, I'm, I'm desperately hoping that that comes out. This is the staircase that the, uh, the child is said to have appeared on. And the woman is over here somewhere, wasn't she? She was standing there, yeah. She took off. Mm-hmm. Just check here. And they think it's the same little girl in the theater. They believe so. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything unusual in the thermal. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Let's hold an EVP session. Chris and I want to try and reach the spirit of a child that is said to appear here in the staircase. Who is the little girl here? Are you the same little girl that people have been seeing in the theater? Do you enjoy theater? Do you enjoy the huge crowds? Did you come here a lot with your family? If you're here and you're listening, please don't be afraid to come out. Ending EVP session. Okay, guys, um, we have had a good night's investigation. Let's get everything wrapped up and get ready to go. We have given a good coverage. Um, I'm very, very confident that we will be able to bring some answers to Carl. But, uh, of course, now we're getting packed up, getting ready to leave, and uh, get some rest before the big analysis. So, guys, Asher Hall, a very interesting place, mm -hmm. um, beautiful. Um, and obviously, you know, what we're going to be looking for, you know, this little girl that's been seen going down the stairs as well as being seen in the auditorium. Pay attention to the audio, listen out for things like that. Let's see what we can find. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Hey, guys. I'm going through the audio, and uh, it's Barry and Chris and in the auditorium. I hear a voice. I want to get your opinion on it. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Gift is just off to our right. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. That's cool. Right? Yeah. Oh, I hear that. Clear as day. Yeah. Good catch. Um, let's see what else we can find. Cool. Okay. We're doing our EVP questions and we're talking about, you know, the possibility of somebody remaining after their death. Well, I think we got something really interesting that you have to check out. It's definitely a voice. Cool. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, 
Violet, it is good to see you again. Angie? Nice to see you again. So you've had an interesting weekend? We have. We're anxious to hear what you've got, so... There were some things that were happening that just stayed outside the range mm -hmm. of, of our equipment. Mm -hmm. Paul and Susan, for instance, were working in here on stage and, of course, um, on the second balcony as well. And they're seeing these unusual shadows moving mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the shadows Paul, Susan, Barry, and myself experienced, it, they, were, they were odd. Now, Susan was also on the second tier when she heard these unusual footsteps coming towards her. Mm -hmm. She also felt that the floor vibrate as well. Almost something similar to what you were describing, mm -hmm. Dame Carey experiencing here on the stage. The next piece we want to show you. Chris and I were um, investigating down toward the bust of, of Mr. Usher, mm -hmm. and you had told us about these double doors. During the investigation, I moved toward those doors and was startled to see someone on the other side of the doors. What we photographed was mm -hmm. this. Is that one of you? Yes. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was seeing was actually mm -hmm. the image of Chris behind me. The panels that are reflecting um, at the eye line, of mm -hmm. course, backward, are these two. Mm -hmm. It will only happen for us mm -hmm. in, in these two panes mm -hmm. as you move close to the door to open it. That's perfect for them. Barry and I were investigating here in the theater, mm -hmm. and we had actually made our way up to the second level. And we're sitting there doing some EVP work, and we got what sounds like a voice. The gift is just off to our right. It's a small doll. Now, were you able to hear mm -hmm. something? Yeah, yeah. It sounded like when you said there's a gift or something. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of taking a shark and take a breath. This recording was taken um, just off from the, the bust of Mr. Usher at the mm -hmm. front of the hall. Mm -hmm. Paul and Susan were set some way back from the device itself. You will hear their muffled voice as they're having a conversation about, is it possible that maybe the people who have passed away in the auditorium mm -hmm. maybe have stayed here? Someone seems to agree with them. Yes. Yes. It goes right through you, right? It does, yeah. So it's just a very clear voice saying yes. Mm -hmm. At least it's a positive message. How do you feel about some of the things you've heard? It's, fasc it's fascinating. Yeah. It's fascinating. So in your professional opinions, do you think we're haunted? You do have some paranormal activity here. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something beyond it, you know. It was a, it was a great opportunity for us, of course, to, yeah. to visit Scotland here in Edinburgh and, and come here and investigate this wonderful hall. Fantastic. But it has been a great pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Pleasure. Thank Thanks. you. The information GHI's gathered is really useful for me because it gives me something I can go back to the team here about and explain, you know, explain some of the activity and why they've seen the things they've seen. Um, and it's evidence-based, which is good. And, you know, some things are explainable, other, others obviously less so. And that someone's still here interested in music, you know, and that's what we're here for. So, <laughs> you know, if there's a, a, you know, paranormal sort of spiritual activity happening and they're still here to listen to music, then then that's great. Well, I was very, very happy with that case and very, very happy with the outcome. See, I was too. I think we're able to give Carl a lot of answers, honestly. It was an investigation that the entire team done exceptionally well at. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hall itself, of course, still has that little bit of mystery to it. Well, um, let's get back, uh, get the team, because uh, I'm looking forward to our next case. Inverary Jail, and Susie's going to give us a download of what we're likely to expect. Now, guys, we're going to investigate the infamous Inverary Jail of Scotland. Now, this place has been in use since the 1820s to 1970, and a lot of people that were convicted of crimes um, were actually tortured. Before you were actually executed, your hands were cut off. It's messed up. Horrendous. Wow. A lot of the guests there, as well as the people that work there, have been experiencing some strange going on, such as whispers in their ears, a feeling that somebody is sitting right next to them, seeing shadow people. So you can imagine why our client, Hannah, is so worried about what's going on here. OK, folks, we're just approaching Edinburgh Jail just in front of us. Wow, wow look at that. Ooh. That's quite different.
Hello. Hannah, how are you? Welcome Pleased to Embraer Jail. Thank you. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. I'm Chris. How are you doing? So it's lovely to have you here in Barrera Jail. I see you've come appropriately dressed with your tartan Indeed. and your kilt. Are you Scottish, sir? I, I am, yes. Oh, lovely. Well, yes. that's very nice. And you've got your tartan scarf on Thank as well. You. So, Hannah, what can you tell me about this amazing prison? Well, we were built in the year 1820. When we first opened, you had the courthouse and the old prison. We had men, women and children here. In the early days, those children who were maybe the age of seven were in with people that had murdered as well. Wow. It's quite amazing, really. Um, but uh, we're, we're told about uh, some of the unusual paranormal phenomenon happening here. Shall we take a look? Lovely. Great. Thank you. We'd like to take you to the old prison. That's where we've had quite a lot of activity going on. A lot of our visitors that come here always want to know, is it haunted? Some visitors can't get out quick enough. They did just refuse to go in certain parts, saying, oh, no, no, there's something in there. I'm not going in there. So this is South 4. This is where Samantha's had a lot of experiences. Okay. Sometimes when you're sitting in, in the cell in the old prison, you'll be talking with somebody and you'll see a shadow past the door. You can come in and you'll have hair standing on the back of your neck or you'll, you'll just feel like somebody's with you all the time. So this is cell seven. This is where Rob heard a woman's voice call him. I was in here one morning. I just stepped into the cell and I heard my name called. Rob. It was a female voice. I actually stepped out of the cell. There was no one to be seen. So this is now the first floor of the new prison. OK. So this is the landing where we've had children coming into the prison for visiting, chatting away to somebody. And when the people have gone into the cell to say, who are you talking to, the child will either say, well, the funny man or the man in the corner, or, but there's nobody in the cell with them. So this is the courtroom. Again, it dates 1820. Everything in the courtroom is original. A lot of people hear footsteps in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the sound. It's quite echoey in yes. here. And we've had a lot of um, voices, a lot of names, a lot of sort of noises that can't be explained. So this is the end of your tour of Inverary Jail. Hopefully you can go and investigate and let us know what you find. Great. Well, we're going to get set up. So we'll see you in a few days. We'll look forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you. My family actually comes from Scotland. I've been to Scotland a few times, but not here. The jail is actually listed with the historic society. Therefore, none of the buildings can actually be modified. So what's really nice is you're walking through a jail exactly as it was you know, 50, 60, 100 years ago. OK, folks, how do we look for setup? In this camera, what we actually are looking at is the first floor of the old prison, where there's reports of this girl running back and forward. And then what we have in the next camera is the second level of the old prison. And the next camera is the first floor of the new prison cells. And in this particular camera, I have the second level of the new prison cells. And lastly, what we have is the courtroom. When people are sitting in there, they are, in fact, hearing somebody walking above them. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Let's get our stuff and get those lights out and get investigating. So this is the old prison. What we've got on this old floor of the prison, the first floor, is a lot of shadows yeah. moving around. Also in this stretch of corridor, we've got a voice that was calling out to the prison guard, Rob back and forward between, oh. Did you hear that? I thought I heard something there. Did you hear something? I heard something, yeah. It sounded like a little shuffle of something. Yeah. We went upstairs to check it out. There was nobody up there. None of the doors were opened. So we weren't really sure what we were hearing. Let's do some EVP work. My name is Barry, and I'm from Ireland. My name is Chris. I want to meet this dark shadow that people keep talking about. Can you tell us who would stay in the cell? Step forward, you will be freed. Let us hear your name. Call out your name. Oh my god, I just heard that. That was a freaking voice.
I've heard screaming, doors banging. Television's number one paranormal reality series is back with all new investigations. What is that? <laughs> Ghost Hunters premieres Wednesday, February 23rd at 9, only on Sci-Fi. We want to know who here has been scaring the people that work here. Chris and I were investigating in the old prison where this apparition was said that to pass from cell to cell. Step forward, you will be freed. Let us hear your name. Call out your name. You oh my that? God, I just heard that. That was a freaking voice. We heard what sounded like a voice. It sounded like it was coming from the far end of the hall. To me, it sounded like it was a nail. A prisoner that called out his name stepped from the cell, come forward to our voices. We did make you a promise, however, that if you give us your name, we would allow you to go. We want to keep that promise. Okay, Chris, let's move on. Sounds good. To both Chris and I's surprise, we heard a name. We did have the 360 running to see what that name possibly is, to give us an idea of who possibly could be haunting this prison. Careful. Scott and I were here to follow up the claims of uh, Barry and Chris that they uh, were hearing movement. So we decided to do our, our first EVP session down in the jail cell. If anybody's in here, we need you to come out and tell us your name. I'm not asking, I'm demanding you tell us your name. Please come out. I said, come out. Stop hiding. While we were in the jail cell conducting our EVP session, I wanted to provoke, and usually I don't provoke, but in a case like this, in a prison, I wanted to see how far I could push it. Anybody else in here want to come out? If not, we're going to burn the place down. This place is going to be demolished, and you won't have a home anymore. You hearing that? I heard that twice. Upstairs. Two times? Yes. I think we hear you. I'm coming up. We were getting little bits of uh, snippets of sounds and voices, so we decided to go up the stairs and uh, see if we could get something else to come out. Whoa. What happened? I thought I felt something touch my hand. Are you playing with my friend Joe? Do we have to set fire to each and individual cell? Smoke you out? I don't care. I don't have to live here. Joe, I just found something. What? I just felt something. Something just touched you? Yeah. Like, not a sigh, but it felt like something was blowing in my ear. Like, Right when we were walking away, right when you were talking. Right when we were talking. Right, probably like right, something like right around here. When we turned around, we were walking away. Yeah. I mean, I got, I don't want to but I have goosebumps. Wow. From that. You only respond to violence? Let's go. Just as I figured, you're a coward. During analysis, I want to play close attention um, to go over the audio and the video to see if anything was caught. So what happens in the courtroom again? So we have footsteps, which they said they sound like they're coming from above them. I'm thinking like one of us should sit in here and one of us should wander around. I'll take a walk along the bottom floor. I'll do it several times. OK. One of the things we decided to do was to split up. Barry walking on the floor below the courtroom to see if maybe the sound is traveling up into the courtroom in some strange way. Barry, I hear you. It's weird. It's weird. It sounds like you could be above me. You can almost hear it in the walls. Okay, I'm on my way back up. Okay. 
You could hear the footsteps in the walls. Honestly, I would have mistaken it for somebody on the floor above me. EVP session. It's Paul and Susan. We're in the first floor of the new prison cells. Susan and I are headed to the first level of the new prison where there's the children's voices and the shadows. This particular cell is of interest because parents have heard their kids talking, but when they go in there, there's no one there. The parents, they'll ask, who are you talking to? And there's several reports come out, but a lot of them, some of them are the tall, uh, the tall man. See if we can get any sort of evidence of this tall man. My name is Paul. I'm Susan. Are you the tall man that children have been speaking with? Were you a prisoner here? Maybe you can knock once for yes and twice for no. Can you tell me? I just heard a female voice. prisoner here? Paul and I decided to investigate the first floor of the new prison cells. Can you tell me? I just heard a female voice. Can you do that again? Can you tell me your name? Now, I was asking some EVP questions, and I did hear the sound of a girl. We were getting what seems like a response. It led us to believe that there may, in fact, be the spirit of a little girl here. If we were talking to a little girl just now, then who's this tall man? So why would there be a tall man in here? You heard that? Yeah. Whilst we were asking some questions, we did suddenly hear this very deep bass knock. And both Susan and I heard it at the same time. Sue's come out. Put your hand around here. Tell me if that's not colder. You're wearing gloves. Oh, I feel it. Right around here, it's just really cold. What was really interesting is when I followed that cold spot in, that spot actually moved forward. So you? Is that what we heard? That is what we heard. Whenever I stepped on that tile, I heard the thump, and then the cold spot was gone. That must have meant that there was something standing right here. Yeah. There's nobody in here. I felt like, in a way, whatever was there was kind of guiding me to find where that sound came from. Okay, folks, uh, sun's coming up, so uh, let's get everything wrapped up and get ready to leave. Okay, Chris. We just finished our investigation at Inverary Jail. The one thing that really caught our attention was the old jail. There were a couple of things that happened there that we couldn't explain, and I think the biggest one was hearing what may have been a male voice. There is a ton for the guys to go over in analysis, and I'm really interested in seeing what might come out of it. So we're just about to go into analysis for the Inverary Jail. So there's a lot of stuff that we're experiencing with the amount of equipment we were actually running. Uh, fingers crossed we actually managed to capture something. Hey, guys. Now, look at the end of this hallway, top level of the old cells. If you watch there, what appears to be something moving at the end of the hallway is a car passing outside. The light is reflecting through the window and causing this shadow effect. So it's actually nothing even in the building at all. Well, that's interesting. That might explain why people are actually seeing shadows. I agree, Susan. Definitely nothing paranormal. Let's see what else we can find. Hey guys, I've got some audio that I think is pretty crazy. Scott and myself, and we're in the old prison. 
I can hear something. Wow. I hear a kid out. It's good to see you again. Good to have you back. Chris and I, when we were conducting our investigation here in the courtroom, were throwing different ideas back and forward to try and understand what possibly could be causing these footsteps that you had reported. So now we want to take the opportunity, while we're here, to let you listen to what it was that was actually causing those footsteps. Okay. 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 Now, we've been at several cases where people have heard footsteps. And right now, we're in a building that's made to carry sound. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing above me on my right hand side. Where is he? <laughs> He's right below us. He's below. That would tie in a lot with people then hearing above you. But it does, it's, it's echoing up yeah. in the roof. That's quite a hike. <laughs> well, I so, heard you. <laughs> well, that, yeah. that was my next question. Were you able to hear it? Yes. You would think the carpet would just absorb the sound down yep. rather than up. I wanted to show you a sample from our DVR system. What you see is the, the window at the end, mm -hmm. which faces toward the lock. Yeah. This particular camera was picking up that unusual shadow play. This was the lights from the cars on the other side of the lock, just <laughs> shining in. This shadow play, of course, isn't enough to what was being reported no. to you as, you know, these huge shadows yes. passing by people. That is not no. it. That could maybe account for when you get that, you just out the corner of your eye, you think you've just seen mm -hmm. something go. You know, that's maybe enough to just it's, it's, it's get quite that possible. quick. Yeah, yeah. So while Joe and Scott were investigating in the old prison, they caught what we believe to be an EVP on our audio. So we're going to have you listen to that and see what you think. OK. Were you able to there's hear some, that? There's a wee, like, a wee whisper after the first voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like right in here. Yeah. Now, what does it sound like to you? I'm not making an exact voice out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing words, but there is a voice there. To us, it sounded like a real quick get out. Yes, I mean, there's definitely a response there. Staying in the old prison, mm -hmm. Chris and I were running our EVP session, and we asked for whatever was there to step out of the cell and give us your name. To our amazement, there was a response. And of course, we want you to have a listen to this and okay. see what you think. Great. Let us hear your name. Call in your name. Did you hear oh that? Oh my god, I just heard that. That was a freaking voice. I'm thinking it sounds like Rodney. And of course, now our question is who's Rodney? I have no idea. There's been voice activity, so there's obviously maybe something that we, we don't know about. We feel that there was a suggestion of paranormal activity, mm -hmm. but uh, not enough that we would call haunted. No. But uh, we feel that there's nothing, nothing that, that is going to harm anyone, of course. That's good. Well, we have to say that we really have to thank you for inviting us to this part of the world. OK, well, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Really glad that GHI have come out to investigate. What I would tell our visitors when they come here is that if they hear things when they're here, great. If they don't, well, don't be disappointed. That reveal went very well. Hannah seemed to be very impressed with the way that we investigated and was able to give her some results. I think we did really well with the debunking. I think so. Well, let's, uh, let's get back to the team, pick them up, and move on to the next one. Sounds good. Mm -hmm.